Hey friends, I wanted to share with you today a little video uh, showing you kind of how to do these uh, waterfalls. Uh, the waterfalls I've done two different ways. Uh, this side over here I've actually got it where I have painted it and then this side here I've added some color to it. But I wanted to show you step by step of how to get it to the point where you can start adding some color. So the first thing I want you to do is to get yourself of course a piece of paper. I ended up using a black crayon with this so that it'll show up really really well. If you have uh, a black crayon and you want to use that you can. If you don't you can use something else that you've got. But the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to break this paper up into various sections and we'll do that with lines. Uh, the very first thing I want you to do is kind of go toward the top of your paper, not all the way, but toward the top of your paper. And I want you to create a line that goes from one side all the way across and it does not have to be perfectly straight. Just kind of create a line, whoops I broke it again, and go all the way across your paper. Now, we're going to do a series of four different lines coming down our paper, but the trick to this is that you've got to add these lines have to increase getting wider apart each time you draw them. So the very first line I'm going to draw next to this is going to be kind of close to this. doesn't have to be straight. I'm just going to kind of make it a little bit wiggly. But notice how close it is to it. It's not super close, but it's close. The next line we're going to do, we're going to space it out. If I only had it this far, I want to make it just a little bit farther for the next one. And so I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to draw another line, but I'm going to make it a little bit further than what I did with the first one. And again, I'm not going to make it perfectly straight. What we're doing is we're creating the ground that this waterfall falls over the rocks or the ground or whatever you want to consider it made out of. All right, so we have this amount right here where it's kind of small and maybe like a medium section. Now for the next one, we want to create a little bit further than what we had before. So I'm going to create another line that's a little bit further and a little bit deeper so it looks something like that. Notice how each section gets a little tiny bit bigger each time. At the very bottom of your paper, way down here, we're going to kind of go off to the corners and we're going to create like a cloud shape, just repeating curved lines over and over and over. So I'm going to start on this side and I'm going to draw some lines that kind of curve and like a cloud would, except I'm going to come toward the center of my paper. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to create some cloud shapes that go toward the center of my paper. And I actually made them kind of touch one another right here with this little, little curved line. This down here will eventually be the greenery for our waterfall at the very bottom. So because it's the greenery, I'm going to add an extra couple lines that match the first thing that I did. So I've got these little curved lines. And I think I'll add an extra little set. Okay. Now we're going to move back up to the top line up here. And we're going to form the waterfall. Now what we're doing, when I had you draw these sections and I had you make them bigger as it went down, what you were doing was showing depth or distance. So the waterfall has to follow that same rule. So this section up here is the furthest point away from where we are viewing this picture. This would be a little bit closer, this would be a little bit closer, and of course down here it would be really close. So what you want to do is you want to start at the top. Don't put it so close together. Kind of give yourself maybe about two finger lengths about width wise. And so I'm going to put a little mark right here and I'm going to bring this down. Now if I bring it straight down, it's not going to show my waterfall getting bigger or coming closer to me. So we have to do it kind of at an angle, almost like a triangle. So 
you're going to bring this down, but don't make your lines perfectly straight. Kind of wiggle them a little bit. And I'm going to bring it down to the edge. Notice how it comes at a diagonal, a slight diagonal. Same thing over here. I'm going to do the same thing on this side, but the opposite direction. I want it to be at a diagonal, kind of going this way. Now notice this section up here and how it gets a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. Okay. Now, at the very top up here, we're going to create like a tree line. So the very top, we want to draw a zigzag line. And it doesn't, you can make it any way you want. Just a zigzag line. Make sure it goes all the way to the edge of your paper. In each one of these points, there's a point here, there's a point here. Each one of the points at the top of that zigzag, I want you to create a line coming down. So it looks something like this. Okay. And what this does is we're going to make these like the tree trunks of the, of the trees. Again, we're going to use another zigzag line. And on either side of this line, I want you to draw just zigzags like this. And again, same thing, zigzags like that. And you don't have to make them perfect. All this is doing is giving you the illusion or the idea that these are trees. So you're just zigzags. And I'm, I'm actually making my zigzags a little bit at an angle, kind of diagonal a little bit, just because it's a little bit easier. But you do it whatever way that you can. And so you're going to draw and do that for all of those peaks, all of those lines that you drew. So I've got something like that. Now, we need some details for our water and we need some details for our rock or our ground. So I'm going to have you add a few extra lines in there. When you do this, do just one section at a time. Don't draw the line from the top all the way down. We want to break it up. We want it to be in this section, and then we want to work in this section, and then we want to work in this section. So you're breaking it up. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a wavy line coming down to that next line. Something like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing in the next one. But I'm not causing those lines to touch each other. I'm actually making it so they don't touch each other, that they don't match each other. Then in this section, I'm doing the same thing. I'm just bringing another wavy line, another wavy line. And what it gives the illusion is that this water is flowing from the very top all the way down to the very bottom. And again, down here, I'm going to do some wavy lines at the very, very bottom. Okay. Now our hills, or our rock, or whatever this waterfall is falling down over, we want to create some curved lines. And we're going to go basic. We're just going to do curved lines and just kind of shift them from different directions. So you can curve it toward the water, or you can curve it away from the water. You can mix it up like I am, but you want to kind of create like this curved line effect. And it just kind of creates a movement in that space. Now, once we've got all the drawing part of this completed, we then want to add some color. Now, I showed you the pictures before, one of them being with crayon, one of them being with, with uh, watercolor paint. If you have any watercolor paint, you are welcome to do that. Uh, this particular piece was the watercolor paint. And so basically taking your brush and you're filling it in with uh, the color that you choose. And of course, you, since it's watercolor, you're using a lot, a lot of water. The thing I want to show you with this is that the bottom section of this water as well as the bottom section of each one of these spaces for your ground, you want it to be darker. 
you don't want it to be all exactly the same color. So we're going to vary that coloring just a little bit. So in this case, the top would be a little bit lighter than the bottom section. Now I'm going to show you that, but I'm not going to do it with paint. I'm actually going to do it with crayon because I did it with the other picture that I shared so that you can kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. So working with this section of your water, I want to come in with a blue and I'm going to start first and because I want this bottom section to be a little bit darker, I'm going to take that blue and I'm going to color this blue down here a little bit darker. But I don't go all the way up. I bring it to about halfway. See that halfway mark? Then I'm going to bring and I'm going to color my next section with the same crayon but this time I'm going to let it be lighter I'm not pressing down as much just a real light value that you're placing on there so that it looks like it's lighter at the top and darker at the bottom now you'll do the same thing for this section again you want it darker at the bottom And then as you go up, you want it to be a little bit lighter. Now let me kind of get this crayon in here and space this in. And then of course up here, you're going to do the same thing, but it's going to be a little bit lighter. In other words, I'm not going to press down as hard with my crayon. I'm going to do it gently, softly. And you can do this also with colored pencils. But the key, of course, is creating those different values. So you've got a deeper value at the very bottom. Same thing here. The bottom section, about halfway. There's my halfway mark. So about halfway, I'm going to make this a little bit darker, kind of give a little bit of pressure to it so it deepens that color just a little bit. And then the very top, of course, still filling it in blue, but letting it be just a little bit lighter. I'm going very, all the way to the very edge. Okay, this last one, same thing again. The very bottom, but be careful that you don't go into this curved line space right in here. This right here is gonna be our little bushes at the very bottom of the waterfall. So we don't wanna add blue in that section. So kind of go around that edge a little bit. And again, you want it to be halfway so that the top section is lighter than the bottom section. So it looks something like this, okay? Now for your green, you can actually do the same thing that we did with water, create this bottom edge a little bit darker and then the top edge a little bit lighter. But if you find that that's just a little too difficult, you can color the whole thing in. The, the biggest thing is you want this section in here, this whole area down at the bottom to be that green to represent all those bushes. Okay. Now, our hills I'm going to give you a choice. You can either do it in a brown like I did, or you could do it with a gray. Maybe you've got a gray crayon that you might want to use, because sometimes rocks aren't always brown. Sometimes they're gray. So if you want to use a gray crayon, you can do the same thing and do the same process that I'm going to share with you with the brown crayon, brown crayon that I'm going to use. So again, just like we did with the water, where we had the bottom section, a little bit darker and the top section a little bit lighter. We're going to do the same thing with our uh, ground or our rocks that the waterfall is falling over. So we're going to start up here and you're going to, again, this bottom section is darker. To about the middle. 
And then the very top, you're still coloring it, same, same crayon, but you're allowing it to be a little bit lighter. Now my, since I'm using crayon, sometimes my crayons, especially when you're using black, sometimes the black will smudge into, into your color. Some of my students get real upset with that. I am not even worried about it. All it does is add a little bit of extra color in there and just makes it look so it's not all exactly the same. So I actually like the changes that that black does to the brown. So don't stress about that. Just do your very, very best with it. So I'm going to continue and I'm going to add that brown and finish it up in that section. So I've got the bottom edge where it's darker and then the top edge, it's a little bit lighter, kind of dividing it in half. Same thing on here, bottom edge, a little bit darker, top edge, lighter. Now, once you end up getting all of your sections for your ground done, you will then want to move to working on your trees and your sky. Trees, of course, being pine trees, I've, that's what they are. They're kind of like a pine tree shape, kind of like what you might consider a Christmas tree, right? It's just a pine tree, an evergreen, and they're always green. So what I want you to do is to choose a green that you want to work with, and I want you to add that green into those trees. After you get those trees done, then you can add some color into your sky. And by that time, you should be all set. So let me show you again my first example. So I've got this completed. I've got this section here lighter, the section down here darker, top section lighter, this section here darker. And the very, very bottom edge is green. And then, of course, up here, my trees are green as well as with with the sky. Uh, if you want to, if you'll notice I've left one little section here white. This is for the little bubbles at the very bottom of your waterfall. If you wish to add that to it, you are welcome to do that. We, I did not show you that in this particular drawing, but if you wish to do that, you, you can do that as well. So have fun. I hope you do uh, a great job. Be sure to show me your pictures. Uh, message me those pictures with uh, Dojo and I really look forward to seeing your beautiful work. Uh, love y'all and we'll talk soon.